All right, so Severin just finally released a Blu-ray of a movie that no one really talks about called Skin Deep that came out in around the mid-2000s, and this is directed by Gabe Bartolos, uh, the guy who did the Jason Lives and the Leprechaun franchise. He's a special effects artist, and Warwick Davis is in this movie too. And this movie is about pure insanity. That's really the plot. It's just... Throw everything at the wall. See what sticks. It's random as fuck. You got exploding uh, piece metal like stickers, where the hell they are. You got you know little people throwing plates. You got monsters with bear trap mouths. You got guys with giant brains, and just it's wild it makes no sense this movie like they try to throw in like a plot at the last second at the end there's like this explanation that's just shoehorned in like this is what the family's up to this is what they're doing this is their motivation it's like i don't even care like i don't i don't understand what the fuck you're talking about this movie shows about pure insanity this is like the perfect movie to watch on drugs it feels like you're tripping when you're watching it because it's just so insane like it's just one thing after another, you're like, what the fuck? Like, you're just watching the whole movie with your mouth open. Like, like you're just at a loss for words at the insanity and stupidity of this movie. There's just a lot to talk about. So let's get into it. Uh, the positives for this movie is that I really like the title card. It's a person being branded, like SD, and then it like turns into fire and it's like skin deep so i always like a fun opening title card and this one has one and the story behind that is that is a real branding happening i was like this looks real there's no way they fake this and yeah it's real somebody like paid money like they wanted to get this branded on them someone who just likes pain i guess and so yeah they just put an ad, ad out in the paper like who wants to get branded and somebody took took the opportunity and yeah so now there's a person out there with sd branded on their leg and so yeah cool title card very weird and the surgeon general i really like the look of the surgeon general on the cover that's his name uh, i don't even think they call him that in the movie maybe they do once i don't know but he looks badass so that's a cool look for a villain very unique and the practical effects or the star of the show. It's all about the effects. This movie is all about the insanity, just the craziness and the weirdness of it. It's a movie that's never really going to leave your brain. It's like Blood Diner, like just weird shit happening throughout. And the effects, like the effects in this movie are pretty good. You got head explosions, heads being ripped off, lots of bloody goodness in here. Like hardly any like CGI blood. I don't think there's maybe like one moment where the blood looked weird, like it was CGI, but that's it. But yeah, that's really it. It's just the insanity of it, the practical effects, and the look of the Surgeon General. That's really all I really loved about the movie was that stuff. Um, but unfortunately, the negatives is, is that this movie is not for everyone because it's a very like low-budget film and it looks bad. Like it's, it's very cheap, like the sets and stuff, and the acting is as piss-poor as it can get. And this movie doesn't even, like, fit the whole screen. It's not widescreen. It's, like, a box. Um, so, yeah, like, they, they weren't using a good camera. The cinematography doesn't look good. It's very poor. There's weird shots, weird framing. And, like, there's, like, fisheye lens shots for some dumb reason. Weird choppy slow-mo here and there that's just not necessary. Just weird artistic decisions by Gabe. Like, weird editing choices and just things that didn't really fit or make sense like the music wasn't good either I, didn't, I wasn't a fan of the music or you know just the audio mixing too like there's a, a, quite a few moments in the movie where just the music and background noise is drowning out anything that's being said so you, you can't even really hear what the fuck's being told to you and I feel like all this movie was recorded like the vocals were done after the fact like it seems like I'm watching an Italian film, you know, where they shoot the film first without audio, but then they record later on in, like, a booth. It Like, it's their voices in the movie, but for some reason it doesn't look like they're actually 
mouthing it. Uh, it just looked weird. Um, but yeah, like the crazy mother in the movie, her acting is the worst, and it's just the way she talks. Like this is how she talks in real life. I saw the interview. This is just how she talks, and but just the way she delivers all her lines. It's like she's reading the script. It's just bad acting. She was the worst, and it's just poorly directed. Like there's a lot of bad direction here. It's just, it, the story makes no sense. Like there is no story here. It's just crazy family doing crazy shit. And one of the crazy family members is in love with the girl, so they have her hostage, and they want to recruit her to be a part of the family. But meanwhile, you got all this other crazy shit that's going on in the basement for reasons, and there's like all this stuff down there, and it's never really explored what's all exactly going on down there, what they're trying to achieve, and like it's just it really doesn't make much sense. It's just whatever. Like it's it's, it's like an afterthought. It's there's no exploration of what this family is up to, really. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, final thoughts. I think this movie is just absolutely insane. Definitely worth checking out at least once just to see if you like it, if it's your kind of weird, you know, style, if you like, you know, just unique films that just go for it and, ha and there's plenty of practical effects, unique monsters in here, it's just, it's not for everyone, though, so know who you are. It's very cheap and low budget. You know, it doesn't look good. The acting, like I said, it's piss poor. It's very bad, so if it sounds like it's for you, check it out. Uh, but I cannot recommend spending $35 to buy it because that's how much this copy was. So when it comes to skin deep, consider streaming it, borrowing it from a friend, or renting it at Redbox. All right, spoilers. Let's get into some of the craziness. So in the opening, we got this guy driving down the road, and we get the introduction to the Surgeon General, who's got this hook on a chain that he throws into the guy's truck, and the truck crashes, and he, you know, he gets him and kills him, takes his face. So we got like a, a nod to Leatherface. He's wearing the guy's face later on for a little bit. And... You know, the way the crash is done, like, you know this movie is a low-budget film from the get-go, because just the way that's all shot and done, and, like, there's random cuts to this muscle, like, this bodybuilding dude, like, it's just randomly cutting to this bicep as back and forth between that and the guy in the car that's upside down. So you're, like, already scratching your head, like, what the fuck am I seeing? What, what, who's this muscular dude? Makes no sense. And then... So then we get introduced to the family that we're going to be following here for a little bit, mainly just the girl, because the parents get picked off pretty quick. That was surprising. But And these people I despise. People that they see like flashing cop lights and they see something on the side of the road and they're like, oh, we're going to just come to a halt and stop and cause traffic. He can't stand those people. So I was glad to see these parents die because there are those people who stop to look at shit so they're at the dinner table you know they get invited over to the house and when they get in there they're not put off by anything the creepy just the set design of this kitchen it just has chains and shit and the dad makes a remark like see i told you it's not bad or like he makes a remark like it looks normal like see these are normal people it's like you, do, you got a guy at the dinner table who's wearing someone else's face clearly but they don't seem to notice that and <laughs> you and then so what sets them off and makes them kill them is the mom takes her camera and takes a photo of the Surgeon General that pisses him off. So he takes this little blade out. His, like Actually, it's not little at all. It's a big-ass blade, and it actually kind of looks like the outline of his face. Like It kind of resembles his head, um, which is kind of cool. But he takes it, and he slices her throat wide open, pretty cool effect just blood spraying out then he gets the dad slices his chest wide open so it's like awesome the parents are already dead and then the son gets killed you know this girl's brother he like slices at him and then the little kid's like ha you missed me I forgot to mention that the dad, like, when they get to the dinner table, and they're, they're being f uh, served, like, raw meat, probably human meat, and he just digs right in. It's being served to him on a cardboard plate, 
and he just no questions asked no hesitation just digs right in and so the surgeon general he has like terminator vision it's, you know looks weird like kind of and just like numbers on the screen that mean nothing at all <laughs> and so then we meet brain big ass brain dude who's not smart you would think he'd be pretty smart with a big ass brain like that but he's kind of a moron and he comes in after kidnapping her and they're like holding her hostage and he brings her like he's like here i don't know what to bring you so i got you soup and money he just gives her a big old wad of cash as if that's going to help her in this situation and i love how she seems to only be upset about losing her dad like this is right after her brother just got cut in half her mom's throat has been slit wide open her dad's dead and all she cares about is that her dad's dead she just keeps talking about the brain like you don't know what it's like to lose your dad you know i just lost my dad it's like what about your mom what about your brother do you not care about them being dead like that has no effect on you at all and then she finds the secret hatch in this room of newspapers just thousands of newspapers the lamp is newspaper the lights all of it it's just made of newspapers. But she finds the hat. She goes down. And she just starts to like, like yelling for people. Like, hey, is anyone here? Like, hello. It's like, who do you think would be down there? Probably a psychopath related to the people who just kidnapped you. Like, she just got down there. She crawled like five, ten feet. And she's already like, hello. It's like, if anybody's down there, it's the bad guys. So why are you yelling out like, giving away your position and giving away the fact that you found the secret hatch and you're on your way to escape, you moron. And this woman never truly tries to escape. Like, her attempts are pathetic, like how she yells. She never gets louder than this. It's like, hey, help. And then when she's, like, trying to, like, hit the window later on with that piece of wood, like, it's like this motion. Like, like ugh. Uh, like she's not trying at all so it's like is that supposed to be funny like that's the joke or is it just bad acting i'm not sure which one it is maybe it's both i don't know um and so and then like we get introduced to this old biker gang called the ancient ones and then you know the one dude gets picked off and so the other ones come back later on to exact revenge and you know it just means war and the guy's got like the bandana on it, and it says war on it but the one guy who gets picked off initially, the way he gets killed is off camera, so that's fucking lame. But the Surgeon General like jumps into frame, but it's like done in like a weird choppy slow mo. And but even before that, there's another like slow motion part that was just odd. Like she runs up and she's like, "Help me, biker dude! Like this old lady's crazy. She's crazy. They're all crazy. You gotta help me." And then when the crazy lady like gives this weird like smile a sinister smile she goes no in like slow motion it's like this random moment of slow motion like all this wind just starts blowing in this moment it's just weird editing decisions there's a point where it just cuts the surgeon general just randomly strangling a cat <laughs> was it their cat just some random cat he's strangling and then the brain takes uh the character i didn't write her name down but he takes the girl on a date puts her on the back of his bike and she's wrapped up with rope and they go like through town they go to this park there's people in the distance there's even like a barbecue going on over here that you see in one shot and no one says it she's got blood on her shirt from her dead parents no one's saying anything they don't notice the blood on her the fact that she's like wrapped up on the back of the bike and that there's this big brain motherfucker it's like this is ridiculous and then what's extra ridiculous is the fact that they cut to this random daydream he's like talking about how he wishes to live a normal life and his idea of a normal life i guess is streaking in new york city he takes off all his clothes and he's running down times square butt ass naked dick and balls bouncing everywhere as he's running towards the camera and the little known fact that guy got arrested, the actor, behind the scenes because that shit's illegal. Like, they didn't have permits to shoot that. Kind of reminded me of Basket Case. Wasn't there a scene in that where, like, the guy is running around, like, New York naked and they had to, like, secretly film that? That's what they did here, but in the middle of the day, in Times Square, and you can see, like, real reactions from people that aren't, like, extras. They're, like, shocked by this big brain motherfucker with his dick and balls down, they're like, oh my gosh, they're like, get away from me. <laughs> you can see, like, all these legit reactions to this. 
so yeah, then there's like an obvious dream sequence. I can't stand dream sequences, but this dream sequence was obvious from the beginning. She's just dreaming about her parents being alive again. And for some reason, her dad's like handing a burger to her mom, handing a burger to her brother. And then he's handing a burger to an invisible person in a chair that's, I guess, supposed to be her. I'm not sure. So then we get this whole like Halloween 4 scene. We got this truck with all these like rednecks and the girl who's been uh, taken hostage, they put her in a bride's outfit and then chain her to the front of the car and they're playing chicken with the rednecks and then you know Warwick Davis is throwing plates at them as they drive by and they're chasing them down the Surgeon General gets on the back of the truck he starts slicing at them and then there's a moment where we see that he stabs the one redneck in the stomach with this big ass blade, blood everywhere. And then when he goes to get it out and the body falls over, there's clearly nothing there. No, there's no wound, there's no blood at all. And then the driver puts the truck at, in park, gets out and just starts running. It's like in the middle of nowhere, the car is not broken down. He could have just slammed on the brakes try to, or you know, slam the brakes and hit the gas, get the guy to fall off so you can keep going. But he just gets out of the truck and somehow this fatso who's very overweight is somehow out running the Surgeon General for a while. They keep cutting back and forth. Like the Surgeon General is like running real quick and he's like running all slow because he can't run that fast. And somehow he's still like a mile ahead of the Surgeon General. But finally he catches up and just drowns him. And we get the one use of the bear trap mouth. This is the one time where he actually uses it to bite the guy's fingers off. But we don't even get a good shot of like the fingers coming off or anything. So... That should have been done way better. We should have seen way more usage of that bear trap mouth. And the other redneck, for some reason, the whole time just couldn't get up and run away or get in the truck. I don't know what the hell happened to him exactly, why he's, like, unable to move. But they go back to him, and they're trying to, like, initiate the girl. Like, you can join us if you kill him. So, But they're, like, forcing her hand. So it's not like she's actually killing this guy. She's being forced to. It's not her moving her body like Warwick Davis and Surgeon General are making her like pick up sand and dump it in his mouth and choke him to death with the sand. And then they just accept her after that. Like, all right, you're part of the family, even though we did all the work for you. So that really made no sense. And then when she gets brain all alone in that newspaper room, she rips a hole in his head, takes a good chunk out, and there's green blood coming out. Then there's green blood coming out of his mouth. But then his brain splits open because for some reason, if you just poke a hole... He just starts to fall apart. His brain splits open and there's red blood inside the brain and all kinds of baby toy blocks. You know, the ones with like the numbers and letters on it. You can spell shit with multiple blocks. Like it's got all those blocks inside. They fall on the ground and they spell love. And then she stomps on it and it spells hate when she picks her foot back up as if that's possible. <laughs> this is like what... Like, this is an acid trip. Like, I feel like I'm on drugs when I watch scenes like this. Like, that that was the scene that made my jaw drop, like, the furthest. It, like, hit the ground. Like, what the fuck am I seeing here? It made no sense at all. Like, it, then, like, the granny has green blood, too. And, like, so these aren't even human beings. Like, she has, like, a hole in the back of her neck. And she has to, like, go down in the basement. And there's, like, a feeding tube thing. Like, some hose that she has to, like, plug back in there. And then... The girl goes down there. She's like, you need this, don't you? She's like, yeah, I do. And then she takes it, breaks it in half, and then breaking that just somehow just automatically has her, like, drop dead. Like, she was walking around perfectly fine without that hose before, but since she just snapped it, now she's just convulsing and she's melting and green pus and everything is just all over the place. Like, it looks good, but it's like it makes no fucking sense at all. And then she meets the creator. He's the creator of all these people we've been seeing i'm not sure how he created them seeing as how he has no head and he never moves off of that damn stage so how did he do anything if he's just confined to that stage area and he's just up there the whole time flexing doing all these poses his speedo says dynamite and we find out that there's a reason why it says dynamite on his underwear there it's because underneath it he has dynamite that he keeps in his underwear, just in case you might need it. You know, you never know when you're going to need dynamite, so it's always good to stick a few sticks of it in your pants, or you know, in this case, your underwear, just in case. It's just ridiculous. Another thing after another thing is like, what the fuck is going on? Nothing makes sense in this movie. I just realized I skipped a whole, over a whole section of the movie, the whole 
biker war thing. So they show up wanting war because their one buddy went missing and they found his bloody jacket so they know something's up. And the one small lady comes out there with a peace offering like here, here's these peace symbol things that I can stick on your forehead and they like or adhesives and they stick to their heads and then the surgeon general is inside he flips the switch and the one guy he takes it off he's holding it in the air and then it blows his hand off and I guess he just quickly bleeds to death after that you would think that your first reaction to seeing that would be holy shit let me get this thing off my head right now no the other guys are like, what's going on here? I don't, I can't put two and two together. The guy was holding that peace thing and then it just blew the fuck up. I'm going to keep mine on my forehead for a few extra seconds. And then the other guy's head blows up. And then the other dude is still keeping it on his fucking head. And then his head blows up as well. And then the other guy, they call him Shakes because he has like Parkinson's. He's always shaking. And then he chases Warwick Davis into the woods and or you know, into the desert, whatever, and he runs out of plates, but luckily, plates, he likes to keep plates buried in the desert all over the place. Uh, like, is it everywhere? Is it just conveniently right there where he's standing? He just reaches into the earth, and there's another plate right there for him to use. He just keeps throwing plates at the dude, and then the old dude takes his shirt off, and he's like, yeah, and he starts running at him, starts bitch slapping the fuck out of Warwick Davis, and then rips his head off, because now he's Superman, like he's so strong. This old scrawny dude has the power to rip off Warwick Davis's head, throws it, somehow manages to reach this like area downtown and like just hits this guy's windshield as he's driving. Like the, the head went flying quite far. And then we never see what happens to them. Like, we never see that guy die from the Surgeon General or the, the other biker chick who was, like, egging him on. Like, come on, kill for me, sweetie. And, like, what happened to them? So the creator, the muscular dude, uh, inside, his, like, chest opens up. And then there's, like, an alien inside. And it just jumps out and attacks the main girl here. But then she just quickly kills it. Like, it's nothing. And then she starts destroying all these, like, glass cases filled with, like, bad science experiments inside. And then that's all it took to make the muscular dude just fall on the ground. And now he's, like, defenseless. He can't do anything. Like, that's all you had to do was destroy some glass boxes. And now he's done for. And then the Surgeon General, they have this very quick fight. It's, like, five seconds long. He jumps down. And she just, like, kicks him into, like, the wall that's, like, electrocuting him somehow. And... And then she just walks out, and, but she sticks dynamite uh, because there's just so happens to be dynamite in this guy's underwear. He, she puts dynamite on the muscular dude. She puts dynamite on uh, this uh, Surgeon General, and the dynamite goes off. It's on the Surgeon General. It blows up, and he walks out all in one piece. He's just like a little charred. He's okay. But then she gets on the bike, runs him over at like 10, 15 miles an hour because she wasn't that far. She didn't have that much distance to like build up speed and momentum to run his ass down she like just got going hits him at maybe like 15 miles an hour and he's like in pieces on the ground his arms over here and pieces over there like that's all it took to make him go into pieces and then the whole house blows up and it's like a miniature shot you can tell and so then she goes to the police because why not? I mean, I'm sure they're going to believe her story. And this wasn't shocking at all. The police are involved. Of course they are. It's just, And then she starts screaming when she realizes that she's fucked, even though she could have just ran right out the front door again. And then we hear her screaming over the credits all the way through. Five minutes of nonstop screaming. <laughs> that was annoying, so I didn't stick around. I had to, like, mute the TV. So that was a bit much. So yeah, and that's the end of the movie. So what are your thoughts on this movie? If you've seen it, uh, let me know in the comments below if you like it or if you just thought it was dreadful. I, I don't blame you if you do because this movie is not for everyone. It is poorly made. It's very low budget. So if you don't like it, I understand. But I kind of liked it, you know, nostalgia and the weirdness of it. But yeah, I do admit it's not that great of a film. But yeah, anyways, just let me know what you thought about it in the comments below if you've seen it. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, 
Alpha B through Z.